welcome in to Rock Painting 101. We're going to be doing an egg today. So the first thing to do an egg is an egg shape, which can be tricky. Um, you know, it's not quite an oval. So I'm gonna show you my little trick. I take a post-it note and fold it in half, sticky side down. I'm gonna do a bigger rock here for the video than I did here on the side so you guys can see a little bit better. So go ahead and just place your post-it note kind of down the center of your rock like so. And then I always start with a half circle. You can shape the egg after. So just start by doing a half circle shape from one end to the other, like so, okay? You wanna make sure you're gonna fit on your rock. And then you come in and kind of angle it a little bit more so that it turns into an egg shape for you. So you kind of start inward a little earlier to make an egg, and then you kind of go past that halfway to point to kind of make that wider base at the bottom, kind of like so. And that's why you kind of sketch it on this post-it and you kind of go back and forth until you, you think you've got a good egg shape, like so. I'll grab my scissors and always cut a larger, along your larger sketch line, I guess you could say, because you can always trim it smaller if you don't like your shape, but you can't really go back and add paper to it. So we're gonna start with this and see if we like it. And mm, that's pretty good. I think it's a little bit too low here on the side, so I'm just gonna trim it, fold it, and just trim it a little bit more here. You kind of can round out to the bottom a little bit more. But just, just fiddle with it till you like your shape. I mean, that's not the main part of this, but, and that little sticky spot is good because it kind of helps it stay in place on your egg while you're tracing. So I'm just gonna trace around the outside edge of this really quickly. And I'm gonna refresh my screen here so I can watch for comments. So I see some people that are here joining live. We're gonna make a larger size of this Easter egg. And we're just gonna trace around the outside edge. And I've got my smaller, hold on, I haven't used this one today to find a place to kind of doodle a little bit. I'm just gonna go along the outside edge here and I'm going to use my pastel colors today because I just am so excited for spring is right around the corner. We had a few teaser days here where it actually got in the 70s and now it's gloomy and rainy and back to being a little chilly today. So perfect day to sit indoors and paint a couple rocks. So I'm just gonna go around my outside edge here quickly. And as always, take your time. I go a little faster on the video than I do when I'm sitting at home painting rocks, just to keep you guys moving and not here for too much time. So hopefully you can see the whole process. So there we go, all the way around. And you just peel it off. If you're doing multiple rocks, you can use this maybe one or two times and the sticky will still be there, but it doesn't stick for too long. The sticky kind of wears off. You can still use it, but now you have your nice little egg shape, nice and symmetrical. So if you're doing a design like this or any design really, it gives you a good place to start. So I kind of started at the top and worked down and then started and then came back from the bottom. So we're just gonna go for it. I'm using my extra fine tip. And I'm just gonna start designing. So, like a lot of like the, the Mandela style things that you'll see online, sometimes just keeping things even can be tricky. And I've talked about some of these uh, points before and tips before, but you know, we get a lot of new people in following the page. So if I'm repeating something you've heard before, I apologize for that, but it will probably be the first time for a lot of people. So when doing these styles of rocks, I like to start in the middle and then break my space um, apart. So I can fit one over here and one over here. And then I'll fill in my center pieces like so. 
And I'm not doing an exact replica, as you can probably already tell, of this rock. I just kind of freestyle my rocks, but you can definitely, you know, use this if you need some inspiration. So we're just going to kind of go at it. Now, a good way to get your arches even is to give yourself a landing point, is what I like to say. So if you're going to try to get your next arch to land here, go on the other side and kind of measure it with your eyes. You don't need to get a ruler out about how far it should be out, like that. So when you start to draw your arch, you can see, visualize where you're trying to land. It will help you kind of keep those lines. Now since we're filling everything in when we're done, don't worry too much, you know, about being perfect because after we fill in we can go back in and, and touch up any lines we want to. So I'm going to kind of make a double line here so we can fill this in with some color. I'm going to wrap all the way around. Like that. Got a few people in the comments here. Hi from Wisconsin. Hi Elizabeth. Hi Tina. And I get a little bit of a delay I've noticed on the comments too. So um, I appreciate you guys stopping in and watching live here. So let's go in. I love doing these stripes. I think it's a fun way to add a lot of color. So I'm going to do one of those here. And I think I'm going to double this one up. I think I'm going to do one of these near the bottom too, just to make it nice and cohesive. And the further down your egg you're, you get, sometimes the harder it is to keep those lines. So we're gonna do the same thing like I was talking about before. First we cut the space in half with a line, then we'll cut each of these in half with a line, and then we'll cut each of these in half with a line. Okay. And we're going to end up off eventually on one of the sides because it's not measured, but you can kind of see what I'm talking about here. And if you cut each of these in half of the line, you'll end up with similar, it won't be perfect, but it'll be similar sized spaces to fill, just like that. And then we're going to do another line here the other side now as you go further down your rock if that's too far you can even give yourself like a little hash in the middle to aim for as well if it's starting to get too wide and, and you feel like your lines are kind of getting a little wonky if you give yourself that middle dash to aim for that can help you out too so let's do I didn't do any like points in this last one and I kind of wanted to but I want them to kind of aim towards each other. So we're going to go down here. And it's, you're going to have to trust me here. You're probably thinking a lot of curves. I just bumped my camera a little bit. I apologize for that. It hangs overhead and I try to get down here where I can see. Try to keep the sunlight. My sun isn't amazing today because it's very gloomy. Like so. I want to do some points. So we're going to start in the middle here and give myself a little dot about in the center. I'm going to do some triangles like this. And I want to go back the other direction too to space them out. Like so. go and we're going to do that back the other direction. Terry, um, the best way she asked if there's any tips to keep it from splattering. The best thing that I can um, tell you is a light touch. I mean I know you can probably hear a little bit of this but I try to use kind of the side and a light touch. If it's not flowing really well for you with a light touch most likely you need to get the ink flowing a little bit better. If you if you push too hard, that's when you catch in those little rivets on the on the rocks, and it will splatter. And I have had that happen. Now, if you're on the inside of your egg and it splatters, you can cover it up with some color when you start going in with your color. But if it gets on the outside, I mean, maybe you can add some dots around the edge. 
You can always fix your mistakes though, you know, make it part of the egg, you know. Maybe, you know, as to quote my favorite painter, you know, happy little accidents sometimes, you know. If anybody knows who that is, you know, give me a big thumbs up. It's my favorite. So we're about a little bit over halfway down the egg. Now I want to kind of start working. I, I like the arch coming up from the bottom as well. So I'm going to start from the bottom here now and, and work my way to the center. So I'm just going to start with kind of a little arch. And we'll work from there. I see some thumbs ups and hearts, so I think you guys know who I was talking about. <laughs> um, I know I'm excited. Judy, I, I'm in full Easter mode. I know I've talked about it before. My, my day job, I guess you could say, I don't know if it's really a job, it's really a lot of fun, is I do have a kids craft blog and we've been doing a lot of egg crafts or I've been working on them. They're not live yet, but I've been I've been working on them and it's got me in this Easter mood. All the pastel colors are so fun. So you know, I don't know, it's hard to be mad when you're uh working with pastel pinks and purples and blues and things like that. So I'm just gonna add these down here like I said. I want to have that kind of repeat near the bottom. Now I did link above, I have um, one of my mini micro pens. I did use it to touch up a little bit on this egg. I don't know if I'll need it for this one since I'm doing this one quite a bit bigger, but I will show it to you. Um, I don't draw right on the rocks too often with them. I, they, you can wear the tips down on them and I, they aren't super cheap. So I'm going to start to even out this plane here a little bit. So my arch won't necessarily be perfect. I'm gonna start making it a little bit wider on the outside than the gap is in the middle so that we can come to kind of a more center spot. So since that's kind of tricky on the eye, I'm going to make myself a couple little notches so that I can try to make it even. And as you can hear, I'm sure you can hear a little bit, this rock is a little bit rough and bumpy. Um, Rita, yes, you can definitely share. You guys can always share these videos. I That's how we get the page to grow and the challenge to grow. So always, always feel free to share them into your rock painting groups or your hiding groups. Some hiding groups don't mind if you share rock painting tutorials to them either. So thanks for asking. Um, Jenny, um, the, the Kids Craft page is called Twitchits. Uh, my sister and I do that one as well. So she's been helping me in the background a little bit lately. And I don't know if anybody noticed, but earlier this week, we actually posted a link that lands you on rockpainting101.com which is pretty exciting. We're really excited about it. We've started transferring some of these lives. We're getting them up on YouTube and we're, we're um, actually indexing them and creating a website with them. So you can also go check that out as well. But um, Jenny, I'll type out the name for you if you can't find it. It's um, Twitch, it's T W I T C H E T T S. So we've been working on that one together for a few years and it's actually what kind of sparked this second page we were doing a lot of rock stuff for the kids and it turned into such a uh, passion slash hobby for me. I really, really enjoyed doing it. And, you know, obviously little kids, some of them, depending on their age, won't quite get into some of the designs I do on here. So it's a nice little fun thing to do for me. So as you can see, I'm just kind of working my way through the rock. Like I told you before, I really wasn't entering into this with a plan of any sort. Um, you, uh, if you outline in pencil, well, I like having the dark ink in between the colors. The tips, I haven't had too much of a problem with the tip of these pens um, wearing down or anything like that. So as of yet, and I use this straight on rock all the time, I mean, you guys see me use these all the time. Eventually, I promise I'll make another video with re like regular paint, but these are just so convenient that it's hard to uh, 
break away from using them all the time. Let's see, what's something else we can do here? Kind of maybe make some, I want to have a space between those triangles and I think we might do some like diamonds or something along here. Um, I do know if you use pencil straight on the rock, I have heard people say like when you, it, sometimes that can be harder to cover than you might think or it can get picked up with the paint because it doesn't actually, pencil doesn't dry so it can get pulled into your paints a little bit. So if you use a light touch, you really, I mean, you can order just the extra fine tip blacks. I haven't had to refill one yet. I guess you can refill them too. At this point, the length of time that this black one has lasted me, I don't know if I'll even refill it. I don't know if it'll be worth the, the pain and the time. I mean, I've heard it can be tricky to do. And since it hasn't, you know, run out yet and I use it a lot, a lot, a lot, you know, since you can order just a replacement, it might just be worth, you know, the couple bucks to get a single one. I do have Amazon Prime, so I don't have to pay for shipping. So it might be worth it to just order a new pen. Now, these, on the other hand, are more expensive, so I wouldn't, <laughs> I wouldn't suggest that. Um, these, I, I use very, very light touch. I wore one of them all the way down on accident when I very first started painting rocks. I went right on a rock with it and I was doing a really, I showed that just earlier this week, the rock that I did with that. And I was doing some fun mandala type things and I wore the tip all the way down. And I hadn't bought those pens for painting on rocks originally. They were ones I just had in my art supplies from just over the years of collecting art supplies. Okay, I'm going to do, uh, add this over here too. I think we're gonna call this a good stopping point for now. When you're doing your rocks at home, just keep going. You can always go back with black, you know, and add something else as well as you're going. But I think I'm gonna call that pretty good. I feel like I need something in here, but I'm not sure what yet. I might repeat the scallops in there, but I'm not 100% sure yet. So. For now, we're going to leave it at that, and we're going to start coloring in our rock. So, um, I've, like I said, I've got my pastel colors, which I love, 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 love. They're just so light and bright. And I just usually start with one color and just kind of pop the one color all over the place. Um, the areas where I do the stripes, since there's actually seven, I'm not going to sit and count out seven. So I'm just going to put down each color one at a time on those and just work my way around. I feel like I'm bumping my camera more than normal today. My hair must be crazy on top of my head. So just do, you know, your colors and just start, like I said, blocking out some, some color. I'm gonna do these purple. And it's okay if you hit your black lines a little bit because you can go back in after and touch up your black lines because this takes barely any time to dry. And purple like that. And then I just work my way through my colors and add the colors in. So does anybody have these pastel ones yet? We did the owls a while back and I know a lot of people got them at that point in time. They were sold out for a little while. I know that In getting close to Easter, that's probably going to happen again, just because the Easter and spring, these are definitely going to be popular colors to be using on your rocks. And let's do this big, thick one here. Oopsie, I accidentally doubted it there, so we'll make sure we cover that up with something. Work our way all the way around. There we go. And sometimes with the lighter colors, if you're directly on the rock, you may want to go back in with a second coat because it can absorb it a little bit.
Oh, and I am so sorry. And I, if I apologize if I mispronounce your name, but is it, let's see here, Donine? I'm, if I said that wrong, I'm sorry. You love them. You've got these pens. I saw you pop in. So hi, thanks for joining. Yes, I, these ones, they're right up there with the glitter ones for me. But the glitter just keeps selling out. So I haven't been doing as many videos with them because I feel bad when I show them off and they can't be ordered. All right, I love teal and purple together. It's one of my favorite color combinations. So I already knew when I put this purple in that I'd want to put in this teal next to it. And see, that's what I'm talking about. Don't worry about if you hit those black lines. It's really not a big deal. I'm going to clean all that up after. It takes less time to just color block in your colors and then touch up with your black because you're basically tracing over lines that are already there. The hard part's done. Planning out where you want things to go. That, that takes a little bit more time. But once you know... Where, what you're doing, where you want it all to go. It doesn't take nearly as much time. And I'll just try to move the ones I've used off to the side. Let's go with the like, two Tony's up here. And we're going to do our petals with our, there's kind of a lighter pink and a darker pink in the set to choose from and I'm going to mix and match them up there at the top. And I think I'm going to do these red. I guess this is in my pastel world, this is red. <laughs> if red was a pastel, I guess it would be pink, right? Kind of a coral. Sylvia, I use a spray. She has to get the varnish over the paint. Um, I hide my rocks outdoors in the elements, so I spray mine with a clear acrylic style um, sealant. I know there are brush on ones available too. Um, but I use Krylon is the one that I use most often. They have a satin, a gloss, and a matte finish, so you can kind of pick the finish that you prefer to use. So I think maybe that's why I've used Krylon clear acrylics from before I even painted rocks. So it just happened to be what I had around the house the first time I needed to try to seal one, and I, and I liked the way that it worked. Technically, Posca pens are supposed to be um, permanent on most surfaces once they dry, but when you're gonna put something outside, I mean, it's, it's gonna get rained on, possibly snowed on, so I like to give it. The thing I do, I, I normally just give it a nice misting type seal once or twice first, just to evenly kind of get a top coat on, and then I'll give it one good spray, but I never spray it so much that it's dripping or running around. It should just kind of, you can kind of tell, especially if you don't have a base coat on your rock, you can tell when you spray it because you can see the moisture on the rock. The rock will turn a little bit darker. Okay. And pink is our last color, and then we start filling in the other colors where we're missing things. I still have to figure out what I want to do on that bottom part right here. I'm not 100% sure. Oh wait, I still haven't used blue. So we gotta use our blue still. I think I'm gonna do this. I don't want that all pink, that's too big. Okay. I'm gonna do some blue and then we gotta make some decisions here. Uh, I This paint dries really fast, Elizabeth. So I, I rarely need to blow dry it. The other day I was doing one where we were blending and really getting the paint wet. So I did have to wait a little bit, but like the yellow, like it's already dried. Don't see a little bit of that blue just came up, but it dries super fast. Sorry, you can't see my finger. So you can go back over with your, your layers pretty quick after 
putting it down. The only time it stays wet, you know, a little bit longer is if you really work the paint, you know, to get it wet so that you can blend your colors. Like uh, there was a, a video, it was, I believe the chicks, we did little chicks and we were blending right on the rock. And so you were really getting the rock saturated. So, but other than that, it dries really extremely quick, which is another reason why I love to work with these because if you make a mistake, you can quickly go back and, and fix it without sitting and waiting for a really long period of time. So I wanna add this orange here when I'm thinking about it because I think it will look good on the opposite side of those zigzag. There we go. All right, we're getting somewhere now. Now we know how we're gonna fill in the rest of these. I need to figure out what I'm gonna do down here. So we're gonna have to make some decisions really quickly here. So I think we're going to maybe just make some, some polka dots like we kind of did on here. I think that looks kind of neat. So let's do that through this center section. So we're gonna start in the middle and I think we're gonna get bigger and then the biggest. So we'll go big round, medium round, and see like in the center here, I'm it's I'm definitely just have like a little dot, just a dot. And I can let that dry and then I can put my color right on top of it and it will look like it has an outline. Same with this medium sized one, just a dot. And I don't have to worry about trying to make a tiny itty bitty circle. And then let's just do a fun little Oh, geez. I'm gonna just, you guys, this is how you know. See, I do these all live. I don't pre-plan my rocks. I do wanna add another layer in here because I feel like that's too big. I don't pre-plan my rocks. I do them live with you so you can kind of see the thought process. People that have these amazing, glorious rocks that you see online, they didn't just sit down and whip them out. I promise you, they sit and they think about things like this. And if I didn't have you guys on, I probably would think even longer sometimes. I think I want to add a skinny stripe here. And then maybe just... You guys, I don't know what I want to do there. Let's go fill in some more stuff and then I'll come back again. Okay, so we got to work our colors all the way through here. Here, So we need purple... And then we're going back to orange. I don't know if I split that one in half, but that's okay. Let's go green. I guess this can bring me to another good point about rocks. Don't force it. If you don't know what you want to do in a certain area of a rock when you're designing like this, just leave it. Come back. You know, it, sometimes when you're doing something else, it will go ding, you know, like a light bulb, and you'll be like, oh, oh that's what I want to do there. So don't, don't ever... Your rock will be here in five minutes, in 10 minutes, in 20 minutes. No reason to hurry. I work a little faster, like I said, on videos with you all so that you're not sitting here with me for hours while I try to figure out what I want to do. But in general, you have all the time in the world to figure out your rock. I think I want to do the light pink. And again, don't worry about those lines. You can touch those up later. But he's coming. I think this rock is going to be so nice when it's done. And like the other videos, once we get these live saved, I've been pulling them in and editing them and kind of speeding them up so you can look forward to that one too. They kind of look neat when you can take a video that's originally, you know, what we might be on here for 30 minutes by the time we're all said and done and you can 
turn it into a video that's, you know, a minute long to post on Facebook. They're kind of fun to see that way. But you all know how long they really took <laughs> to make. Put that little dot there. We'll do this. I do like to leave some rock left open. And so I almost want to leave this stripe rock and I don't want to go right up next to that. So let's add one more, one more line guys. Right along like this and we'll give it a second to dry and then we'll go in with our blue there and just make a nice little skinny blue line in there. And then let's do this end here, blue. That. And then this, see, this is already dry up here, guys. That's just how fast it is. Dries. That's a very skinny line, so most likely I'll have to touch this up. Just the lighter touch you use with these, the finer line you'll be able to get. I need one more. That's so crazy that this actually ended up being the same amount of stripes as this one up here. Huh. Wow. D couldn't do that again if I tried. Okay, so... Last stripe here is purple. Here is purple. Let's go. Mm, I don't wanna use purple because I just used it in those other stripes. Try to keep my colors spaced apart a little bit. So if I have something big with purple here, I don't wanna do something big with purple right underneath. So I think what I'll do is I'll do yellow around the blue dot and then maybe orange around the yellow dot. So I'm gonna get in here really close because it's a pretty small spot. Get that filled in. I'll probably have to touch that one up just a little bit. And then let's get in there with some orange and I think we're gonna start touching up with black after that and we'll call it good. So I really hope that you guys try something like this. These. I mean, you don't have to go as many sections. You can start with just, you know, four main sections and they'll still look really cool, really amazing. And it will look like you spent hours on it and you can spend hours on it. I mean, can you imagine if you just slow down a little bit and take your time, what you can create with these is gonna be really cool and I can't wait to see you all come back and start sharing them in the comments because you better. I love seeing them. All right, so now we're just going to go in. I've got my extra fine tip. If I need it, I might use this one as well on the smaller stuff. And you can see how small of a tip that really has. This comes in like a six pack. And the, I mean, these tips get like itty bitty, itty, itty bitty. And you can really, I mean, I can draw like around these little circles with it and I will show them to you, but you can do for the most part, a lot of the stuff just with this extra fine and, and Posca does make a smaller tip. I just don't have any of them yet. So if you have those, I mean, that would work great too. So just go around and kind of clean up your edges. Just trace over your design. The lines are already there. It really makes those colors pop to have that black in between everything. But we're just about done for this one. So I appreciate everybody hanging around today. I know this was a longer video, but hopefully it has sparked your creativity a little bit, enough to give this one a try. I know we've done a design similar style in a heart before. Everybody seemed to really enjoy doing those. I got a lot of really neat pictures of those shared. Like that. I'll clean up those dots in a second and I'll show you. Okay, let me do this line first and then I'll show you this extra fine. And if you're getting into doing more detailed work with rocks, I would suggest this set because this is the point three. They have different sizes or point, or not point three, zero three. It's what, but see how tiny that is? And it can, it can go right on the rocks. So we're gonna go and I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna get right up close here and I'm gonna 
do this circle around this blue. Just like that. It's like a felt tip. Okay. But again, I will forewarn, very light touch. Once I started using light touch, I have not worn out a tip since. But if you do not use your light touch, you will wear out the tip on these very easily. Let's see how much in, that you can really get in there. And add those really fine details. I mean, you could even go in here and start adding even more detail. I mean, I could go nuts adding more lines, more fine lines and details. I won't do that because you guys have hung with me long enough today. A couple more spots here. Let's see how easy that helps to touch those up. It just gives it a, a much cleaner, cleaner look. And it's easier than trying to get your pen angled just right on its side to get that super tight. But there's that. And I might kind of sit around and, and look for a few more little edges, but I, here, let me show you. If you do get the set so you can see, um, there's six of them that come. I am using about the middle size. This one is the finest tip, tiny, and then this one's the biggest tip. But, so you have a lot of different ones that you can work with. So, again, thanks for joining in, everybody. It was a longer one, but I think it's really cool. Lots of fun. So I really hope you give this one a try. Everybody have a fantastic day. Take it easy. Bye.